welcome back to the channel guys it is me 80 summer full four so today guys i'm gonna do my champions league final preview guys so um before we even get started i want to make things clear this is just gonna be a short preview this will not be a long preview so if you want an extended version of this preview there will be a members video there's already a members video out that's around like 16 minutes this will probably be half of that so I expect this one to be around eight minutes at the most, possibly five to six minutes ish, just depending how much the analysis I can do. So just be aware that if you want a much more longer edition, much more narrative based and all that good stuff, there is a members video. I will leave a link in the description below. And obviously, guys, please like and subscribe, guys. It helps the channel grow. We just reached 1,200 subscribers. So let's try to continue to push for 2,000 subscribers. I want to reach 2,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Okay? So let's start with Inter Milan. Inter Milan, like, what a season, man. Inzaghi has done an incredible job with this team. This team has looked great. Defensively, are so solid. Attacking-wise, they're finally coming to form. And you can see with this Inzaghi team that the team has just built has been crazy. You know, I want to give a shout-out to Onana. Onana has been incredible. Well, the guy has been vitally important. The guy has been instrumental to see how good... Inter team. He's kept eight clean sheets. I believe that is the most clean sheets in the Champions League this season. And obviously, uh, Chalano, the guy's not even a CDM, and he's playing fantastically well there. Obviously, shout out to Lukaku as well, who's finally coming into form, you know, getting get those crucial assists and goals. And Latar Martinez, the guy looks reborn. The guy looks like a completely di different player to what we saw in the World Cup. And, you know, Brozovic is still there. DeMarco is still there. This Inter team has just done really, really good. You know to get to this far and like i said financially they need they needed this you know financially they were struggling a lot they are i don't think they're able to keep lukaku because of how expensive he is his wages and everything so the fact that they made the champions league finals helped their financial situation and they and if they can win the champions league oh man their financial club their financial status is gonna be great they you know they can survive you know they they don't have to make that big a player selling they don't have to sell a big player this summer which has been a concern. Now, I believe they don't need to sell big players this summer because of how far they made in the Champions League, how well they've done domestically this season. So that's definitely helped a lot. And yeah, for Inter, man, what an achievement, man. And Zaghi, man, incredible job to see what he's done at Inter in his second season here in charge. Then for Manchester City. Manchester City have just been amazing. They have been so good. And they had just come off the win over Manchester United. They had just beaten United in the FA Cup final. And this is the last, last trophy. I mean, if they win this, they can complete a treble. And, you know, I just, I forgot to mention this for Inter. They also could complete a treble as well if they win the Champions League. So, obviously, it's not the same treble as City, though. You know, um, you know, but still, you know. Uh, obviously, with the uh, Super Cup, I think they won. And, obviously, Copa Italia for Inter. And then for City, obviously, you got the FA Cup and the league. You know? And for City, man, I mean, like... The, the team is playing, playing so well. And the thing is, like, with Holland in particular is that, yes, he may not – he's been prolific. Obviously, he's been amazing in the Champions League this season in the Premier League. You, If you can nullify him, there's other problems you got to deal with. you got to deal with KDB. you got to still deal with Ilkay Gundogan, who just come off a brace in the FA Cup final. That first goal was amazing, by the way. What a goal that was. And then you still have Rodri that's still there, Bernardo Silva that's still there. Like, there's still a lot of weapons Manchester City have. And I'm not even mentioning the fact you could bring on Alvarez and Foden off the bench. You know, it's crazy, man. Like, Manchester City have so much depth in the forward areas that it is illegal. And I'm even forgetting Riyad Mahrez as well. Like, that is also great in big games. You know. So now let's talk about um tactics, right? Tactics, tactics. Okay. So Pep Guardiola, we know what Manchester City can do. They're going to play with possession. That's their brand of football. They're going to be playing that open brand of possession, as they typically like to do. And for Inter, they're going to be very defensive. Now, for Inter in this game, I think they have to approach a mindset of being conservative and not be too conservative. They should try to be somewhat pragmatic. I think that's the best approach because the key to stop this Manchester City team is to win the midfield battles. And that's where I feel like Manchester City is very strong at. Because the thing with Manchester City is that their idea is to keep the ball as long as they can. And whenever they lose the ball, they want to try to win the back as soon as they can. So for Inter, can they be effective with the ball? That's the important thing here for Inter is that can they can they um keep hold of the ball for a long period of time and be effective with it? I think that's the key difference between the two teams is that Inter don't really need possession, whereas Man City do need possession. You know, Inter can afford to not really need the possession. 
and they could be counter they could be clinical on the counter attack. So it's gonna be very interesting because Inter is always gonna set up with a three five two. You're gonna have the likes of Bastoni, Ashurbi, and Darmian at the back, and then for Man City they're gonna play the three one four two with Akanji, Rodri, um, and Rodri Stones as a DM partnership, and then obviously you're gonna play Walker at the center back. And they're gonna obviously play Ruben Diaz, um, and um, you're gonna also play um, Nathan Ake as well. So. I just think it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out. Because, like, guys, this Inter team, for me, they need to win that midfield battle. I think the midfield battle is going to be what determines this game. Because if Manchester City can keep hold the possession very well and retain the possession very well, then I think they have it. My issue with Inter in the particular is that I feel like, for me, their biggest weakness for Inter is the fact that um, explosive players, players that have a lot of speed, and that is something that the City team do have. Like the likes of Bernardo Silva, you know, bring on Foden off the bench potentially, you know, possibly Mars as well. I feel like they can add a lot of problems to the um, back line of Inter. And I feel like that can cause them a lot of difficulties. Because we saw in the uh, we saw in the Milan derby that whenever Inter did ha- whenever Milan did attack, their best forward by far was Liao. Liao was the one that was creating danger. He was creating havoc for the defense. And if any time there was any danger, you you could sense it was coming from him. So it's like he's very very pacey, you know. So it's gonna be very interesting to see how Manchester Inter deal with that in particular. Now for Inter to win this game, I think that for them, as I said, they got to be pragmatic. They have to be defensively solid, and they have to be clinical with their chances because we have seen it this season that this City team can be beaten. You know, now they haven't been. I don't think they've lost a game with their new formation, the three one four two, and so they have dropped points though. They drew up, drew up points against Nottingham Forest, I believe, earlier in the season. So, you know, that's when they just come off the win against Arsenal, the Emirates. So, it's going to be very, very interesting to see how that pans out. Now, it is time for my prediction. My prediction, guys. Prediction. Uh, right here. I'm going to go with Manchester City to win this. I feel like for me, from Inter Milan, I do want to see them win. I would prefer to see them win, to be honest with you. Um, as the underdog, like I said, guys, it would be nice. You know, Inter gets another Champions League. Serie A rises, you know, because there's a possibility that all three Serie A clubs could lose the final, which would be very sad. So at least one of them could win. And, you know, I just think for me, though, Manchester City is just too strong. I think Manchester City is way too strong, you know. And I feel like the fact that they're in this hunt for a treble is just scary in itself. Like, they're they're going for the treble, guys. They're going to go for the treble. And they're not going to stop here, you know. And I feel like for Inter, my issue with Inter is I, I feel like for me, Manchester City is just so well organized. And that they're, they're just defensively solid. I just feel like for me, Walker is going to have a master class in this game. I think Stones as well. Akanji as well. I think these guys will do very well at the back. And for Inter, I feel like the pacey players will cause them a lot of issues. I'm looking at the likes of Bernardo Silva. I'm looking at the likes of potentially, like, you know, um, uh, Jack Grealish in particular that can cause issue. I just feel like for me, these players will just cause so much issue for Inter. And I don't think Inter is going to be able to handle it. You know, now we'll say this though: if Inter can nullify their wings, then they they can do this. But for me, they have to nullify the wingers because if Inter don't, they're gonna lose this game because I just don't really feel like Dumfries and Demarco is capable of doing that task. Like I said though, we're gonna see what happens, and so like I said, my prediction is that I think uh, Grealish is gonna score a goal, and I have a feeling that Gundogan's gonna score one goal as well. So like I said, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this preview. Like I said, let me know your predictions comments below. Like I said, guys, if you're new out here, consider that like button, hit the subscribe button as well. Uh, check out my other podcast description below. Consider becoming a member of the channel. Try on vacation with me, not if I'm never go live. And yeah, I'll see you guys later. Peace.